Hello, my name is Fritz de Mul, and this is a presentation about depth chemography, 3D uh, voice diagnostics. The work was carried out in the Groningen Voice Research Lab at the University of Groningen in the Netherlands. This is version 2. The first video chemography project, previous uh, project, Voice Diagnostics in a New Perspective had the goal to develop and apply a new type of video camera for horizontal positions and movements in patients. And this second project is to measure vertical positions additionally. Experimentally, develop instrumentation, numerically, develop simulations of the dynamics and develop a method to compare the measurements and simulations. And this project was financed by the Dutch Technology Foundation NWO STW. There were three publications. The first one was the initial publication with the outline of the technique and some measurements. The second uh, dealt with uh, the optics and uh, details about the technical development and the third about simulations and direct comparisons with the measurements. And more details and program can be downloaded free for from this site. This is the contents. First imaging of the focal folds. Second uh, two-dimensional video chemography. Third, 3D. Four, numerical simulations. Five, comparison of measurements and numerical results. And six, conclusions. And we start with number one. Here is a uh, top view of the focal folds with one and two, the right and left focal fold. Three is a blood vessel. Four is a glottis. that can be partly or completely closed during phonation. And five is the line, image line, that is repeatedly imaged in video chemography. Here is a stroboscopic image of the focal folds. And the, this is the image line in uh, chemography. Now we go first to 2D video chemography. Here is the top view again, and the image line as a function of time in video chemography. Here we see the blood vessel again. This is the 2D video chemography system with the mouse, the endoscope, the light source. Here you can see on top of the glottis and the focal folds. Here is the camera and the rest of the equipment. The 2D video chemography system contains of, consists of uh, optical axis of the endoscope, the focal folds, and the focal folds in this figure are drawn after rotation over 90 degrees, because uh, the glottal, glottal midline is parallel to the endoscope axis. This is the glass fiber from the light source and here is the camera system of the chemograph. And in video chemography, the image of one camera line is recorded repeatedly. And now 3D chemography. Here is the 2D system again. And here is the addition for 3D extension. Detector array, a semi-transparent mirror, the laser and a cylindrical lens, or a cylindrical mirror, and again the focal folds. And the detector array may be combined with the camera system. We use laser triangulation for the depth measurement, and this is uh, an outline of this method. More in detail, the laser tri triangulation again. Here is the target in two positions. 
the laser beam with a cylindrical lens. Here is the detector system and the imaging of the two positions onto the detector array in different places. This is a practically favorable setup compared with the uh, perpendicular incidence of the laser beam. So we choose this setup. The video chemography system with the laser projection channel and using a cylindrical lens to produce a line image. Here is the uh, 2D endoscope and the high speed camera. A photograph of the whole system. This is the 2D endoscope, commercially to, uh, commercial 2D endoscope, and here is the 3D extension. This is um, a view from the bottom, the 3D extension and the 2D Im imaging system. The resolution is about 50 microns. The system characteristics are a laser of 658 nanometers, about a red light. Laser line in, on the focal folds is 18 uh, millimeters wide by 0.4 millimeters uh, uh, across. Triangulation angle 7 degrees. Camera systems are first a high speed camera and second position sensitive linear detector array. An overview of uh, the development of the focal folds in time. This is taken from uh, the work of Hirano. This is one cycle. Left is the modal voice and right is the falsetto voice, the high pitch. And at left side of each is the dotted region at the solid lip and the open region is the mucosal uh, lip. The conventional 2D chemography is only a top view, an image line as a function of time, as the glot is open, closed, open, closed, etc. What do we want to see? That is this kind of figure. The 2D chemography line, but with extra information, the vertical profile, like this. And this is what we see with the 3D. Here is an image of the laser line. Here are the glottis, open, open in this moment, and this is uh, the corresponding depth uh, chemography plot. And you can see here the uh, height of the uh, line. Another plot. Here is the distance from the glottal midline in millimeters. This is time in milliseconds, and this is the vertical amplitude. And you can see there is a kind of evolution in the height of the uh, of the projected line. Now the movie. What do we want to see? Such kind of movie. A 2D chemography line with extra a vertical profile. What do we see? The program describing these measurements was awarded for the novelty, significance and potential research impact. And now we go to numerical simulations. The goals for the numerical simulations were to simulate the horizontal and vertical motions of the focal folds and to directly compare measurements and simulations. The modeling is as follows. We model the focal folds as two masses with horizontal and vertical freedom. The masses are connected by springs and dampers and also connected to the walls and they are driven by air pressures. And we simulate it as functions of time, the coordinates, the pressures and the flows. The most important references are the model of Ishizaka and Flanagan in Bell Systems TechNap, Tech, Technical Journal. Teach a lot of uh, publications and the pertinent here is the human focal uh, cords mathematical models and Koizumi 
uh, Thomas models for the focal uh, faults. Here is the picture of Hirano again, the side view of the uh, focal faults with upper and lower lips. Uh, and here the top view, opening and closing and so on. And this is the modeling opening closing of the two masters and the blocks may also have vertical freedom apart from the horizontal freedom. Here we have the two mass model connected with springs and dampers with each other and with the walls and this uh, uh, sign, this symbol stands for a combination of an inertia and a spring and damper. A picture of the, glot of the glottis with two, two masses connected to the walls. Here are the trachea going to the lungs, of coming from the lungs, the glottis, the vocal tract uh, to the mouth. And this is an, an example of the pressure uh, situation in the contraction part, the glottis here, and the expansion part to the mouth. And of course the pressure distribution will depend on the actual positions of the masses. Spring forces. We have two situations, open and closed. Here is the midline of the glottis. And for the Y, the same. The force will be given first by a linear term, proportional to the displacement, that's Hooke's law. Then we have a nonlinear term uh, uh, describing the nonlinearity of the uh, tissue and an extra term describing the closure uh, in which the tissue is compressed. Damping forces are of course proportional to the velocity, so as a function of the coordinate it will be constant, but uh, in when there is closure the damping will be much larger because the two masses will touch each other, and since this is in discontinuity and difficult to handle in a compute program, we smooth it a little bit in the program. The forces exerted by the pressures are, there are two types, in the x direction and in the y direction, and of course they depend on the exposed areas. We have six situations, in three for the open situation, for the masses and three in the closed situation. And the x and y and the thicknesses and width will vary. Here is an uh, impression of the pressure uh, distribution again. And here is an uh, impression of the description of the flow through the glottis with uh, springs, dampers and inertia resistances combinations as is seen here, the pressure drop or the pressure change is a function of the resistance, the inertia, the flows and the change of flows. And the change of flows of course is important for the inertia. This R is a flow resistance and of course the pressure distribution depends on the actual positions of the focal masses. Now, the combined model as we use it, based on older models, but a little bit more complicated. We have six system coordinate variables and two masses. And there are four equations of motion for uh, both masses and for the x and y coordinates. And the equations of motion look like this, that's the, uh, the time derivative of the impulse minus the forces must be zero. And here is this uh, written out, this is the uh, time derivative of the impulse, with this term, since the, also the mass is time dependent, and here are the forces. And this is the acceleration term. We have two additional constraining equations, because we, there is a conservation of total mass, when the mass 1 is changing, then mass 2 has to compensate. And of course the y coordinates and the thicknesses are connected. 
And so we end up with six independent variables. Other models are from Ishizaka and Flanagan. They only have the x dependence and fixed depth and width, and the forces are not in the center of masses. And Koizumi, they have no wall connections for the upper mass, and also the forces were not in the center of masses. And that's in our model, that's the case. For the pressures and flows, to calculate the uh, pressures and flows as uh, analog analogons for the voltages and the currents, we use an electrical analogon as is seen here. For the lungs, the trachea part, glottis, vocal tract with n compartments depending on which vowel you would like to produce, and the mouth. The lungs are modeled with a, a voltage uh, source or a pressure source and a resistance. The trachea and also the vocal tract parts are modeled as filters. The glottis is modeled as a resistance plus an inertia, and the mouse is an inertia plus a resistance parallel. And this is after these others here. All the resistances, compliance and inertias can be calculated as functions of length and diameter and density using the standard um, expressions from uh, flow physics. The focal tracts, the components, depend on the vowel characteristic, which, which vowel you would like to produce, and in the, in the static situation, all inertias will be zero and all compliances will be infinite. The calculations. We start from either from zeros, and then we have to build up the pressure in the lungs, or from a static uh, situation. And then first we calculate the circuit elements, and from the circuit elements we calculate the flows, and that's done in the uh, electrical analogon with a set of 2 times n plus 2 linear equations, and n is the number of focal tract compartments, and it's in the mostly about 50, so we end up with something like 100 linear equations to solve uh, at the same time. From the flows we calculate new pressures and forces, and from the new pressures and forces we calculate new coordinates using the coupled nonlinear equations of motions. And then we can uh, look whether we are finished or not. Is the end time reached? If yes, then we are ready. If no, then we have to perform a time step and do the calculations again with new circuit elements from the new coordinates. These are the input parameters of the simulations following these others. Uh, general parameters, general physics parameters, mass 1 with masses and coordinates and springs and dampers, mass 2, masses, coordinates, springs and dampers, the coupling between the two, the lungs, pressure and re uh, resistance, the trachea, length and area, and the contraction, lengths and areas, and the mouth. Here is the input screen from the program, as you can see, and uh, here are the input parameters. This is the focal tract area functions, uh, and here we have the DC values f uh, calculated when the inertias are zero and the compliances are inf infinite. This is the, the choose the selection of which model you would like to calculate, the, uh, the upper mass, width and thickness variable are constant, the lower mass, width and thickness variable are constant, start the calculations either from zero or from the DC values, select which output you would like to, uh, to, to uh, have, the time output and the frequency uh, uh, transformation of it, and here what would you like to see, the, uh, the results in table form or in a plot, the time domain for the begin and the step for the uh, calculations and the end and the frequency domain and then you can go to the calculations. Here is an overview of the output variables. The model codes, as is given here, ABC, AS123 is a much model, Ishizaka, Flanagan, Koizumi and the combined model, that's our model here. B is 1 for the lower mass, both width and thickness variable. 2 
with constant but thickness variable and 3 with and thickness constant and for the C for the upper mass the same. Then we have the DC flow in liters per second. Mouse pressure, the average plus the amplitude of the uh, oscillation for the flow the same, average and amplitude, the frequencies, first peak in hertz and the ratio of the overtones with the first peak. Then information about the glottis, closure, phase delays, average duration, the open width and area. And here is the calculation screen with the coordinates, M1 and M2, the glottis opening and closing, that's the gray area. And here is the frequency uh, uh, transformation of the coordinates. Here we have the pressures from the lungs over the trachea and the glottis uh, here to the focal uh, uh, part, the mouth. And here are three of the flows, the lungs, the glot in the lungs, the glottis and the mouth. Here we have the information about the masses and here some pertinent data. This is an impression of what the masses are doing during the calculations, opening and closing, moving upwards and downwards and to the left and to the right. Here are the pressures going up and down. And now we will give an impression of the program itself. The computer program, it's called VFDIN. Here are the conditions. And we go to a small screen and do calculations. Here is the input uh, screen with uh, the physical constants, uh, constants for the parameters, for the masses, uh, and the coordinates, and the springs and dampers, here mass 2, the coupling, spring and damper, the lungs, pressure in the lungs and the resistance of the lungs, the trachea in length and area, the contraction, and the mouth, and the focal area tract function according to Titsen. And this is the focal tract area function number 9, and that's for the O. There are 47 compartments, as we can see here. 40, uh, 45, 44 compartments. And length and area are given, and the uh, resistances, inertias, and compliances can be calculated. Here are the DC values, the pre-calculation. Here you select a model, upper mass, width and, and thickness variable or, or not. The lower mass, start calculation from zero or from the DC values. The time domain, begin and end, and the time step for calculations and for plot output table. The plot window, the frequency domain. And now start calculations. Start. Interrupt. Here you see from the start the pressure in the lungs building up. Pressure in the lungs. Here are the masses. Mass 1 and mass 2. And X, Y and D. And here is the glottis. Opening, closing, opening, closing. Here are the flows. Here you see an, an uh, impression of the masses, opening and closing, the pressures, parameters, uh, re resistances and uh, inertias. And here some uh, data about the calculations. Here we go on with the cal uh, calculations. And here we get the Fourier uh, transform of the time signal building up. And there is a, a little bit of shift in, uh, included. Fourier shifted. And here are data about the masses, mass 2 and mass 1. The uh, equilibrium mass from the start. The average mass and its amplitude, the average um, x and its amplitude, average y, the d and the w, the width. There is a quick parameter change. For instance, for let's say parameter 8, 
the equilibrium mass for mass 1, parameter 8. So let's change a little bit and see what will happen. You can see here in the coordinates that the coordinates will change. And so you can investigate uh, quickly what's happening with the parameters. Let's reset the parameters to the old value. At least. Here is a movie panel in which you can start a movie overlay of the, for the measurements to compare measurements and simulations. Height panel. And here is the sound panel. You can select the flow in the glottis, the flow in the mouse, and the pressure in the mouse. But let's take the flow in the mouse. Start sound. <laughs> You hear the uh, subsequent frequ frequency transformations, Fourier frequency transformations of the monotonous sound. Let's stop. So here at the start, you can see the masses opening and closing, opening and closing, upper and lower, and here is an impression of the parameters. Here the Fourier building up. Now we stop. Input can be changed or the results can be saved and exit. Exit. The program will produce a monotonic uh, sound and we will compare that with the sound uh, obtained uh, during the measurements. As you have heard, the sound produced uh, during the measurements and do, uh, with the computer program are two monotonous uh, sound products. Some results of the simulations now. We have uh, simulated the masses, the coordinates, flows, frequencies, the vocal tracts, are the area functions, comparison of measurements and calculated values, and slopes. Slopes mean the uh, effect of variation of parameters upon the variables, the masses, the uh, frequencies and the coordinates and so on. We have three models, Ishizaka Flanagan, Koizumi and the combined model that we uh, obtained. B is the code for the lower mass, 1, 2 and 3, and C for the upper mass. And for instance code 313 means A is 3, that's the combined model. B is 1, it, uh, this means the lower mass and then number 1, D and W variable. And for C is 3, D and W fixed. Here we have the uh, masses, averages and amplitudes in the various models. And the error bars here denote not errors, but amplitudes of the oscillations. And you can see that in the first model, this is Isaka Flanagan, there were no oscillations. Here we have oscillations in the model. And the oscillations vary with uh, different uh, models. In this presentation, we will not uh, dwell upon explanation of the differences in the model outcome. Here are coordinates, averages and amplitudes in the various models. The coordinates you can see here, the x and y's for model 1, for mass 1, the x, y and d and w's for mo uh, mass 2, and, of course, and again, the arrow bars denote oscillation amplitudes. And this codes for the various models we used. This is an overview of flows, pressures and frequencies. Uh, model 333 is used as a reference and all the values are set to 1. And the absolute values of uh, the reference is given here. The mouse pressure, for instance, is in the reference 0.45 Pascal. 
and so on. Open glot is duration and open glot is uh, the maximum area. Closure uh, percentage and the reference is 23.3, frequency of the first peak, etc. And you can see that, especially in those models here, there are large differences, especially in the phase delay of closure of uh, mass 1 and mass 2, and in the mass pressure and the various frequencies. Here are the frequency peaks, intensity ratios in various uh, models. The third compared with the first, the second compared with the first, the third, fourth and fifth co all compared with the first frequency peak. And you can see there are huge differences in the different models. Here we have the uh, effects of different focal tract area functions, but uh, to look at that we have to look at the focal tract area functions first. This is the cross-section area in the compartments of the focal tract as according to Sori and Tietze, and you can see that the O is produced uh, near the mouth opening, the E is produced a little bit deeper, and the A is produced far deep in the mouth. And here is the effect on two uh, variables here. The ratio is the value for the O, O is the green line, green line and the ratio of those values compared with the values for O. And you can see there are huge differences, especially here in the frequency peaks, frequency 2 over 1, 3 over 1, 4 and 5 over 1, and the closure. That's almost the same, but the frequencies are different. The effects of different focal tract area functions, the flow in the mouth for the various vowels, and you can see here is the flow in the mouse as a function of time, in which the flow can also become negative. And of course, that's why singers do not uh, have a lot of air production, but uh, oscillate the air uh, backward and forward in the mouse, in the vocal tract. Here is the pressure in the mouse from 0 to 1000 Hz. The grey lines are in the uh, mouth and the purple line in the glottis, glottis and you can see there are huge differences, especially for the glottis. But let's have a look at the mouth and the glottis again. Here we have those functions as frequencies and for the frequencies in the mouth especially we have those plots here, but now for 0 to 5000 Hz, and you can see there are lots of differences for the for the E and for the O and for the A here, because the E has very high overtones, and here the overtones are more in the 1000 Hz region, and the O has not that many overtones, but lower, over, much lower overtones. Comparison of measurements and numerical results. Here is a comparison of measurements and simulations. And we have uh, successive vertical cross sections of the simulations. Here are the simulations and here are the measurements. And those uh, comparison is shown in the next uh, part. Let's have a look at the comparison of measurements and simulations during one vibration cycle. And you can see it here as uh, 49.4 milliseconds, 49.8, uh, 50.2, etc. Here is the glot is opening and closing again. First the, the lower masses and here uh, the upper, upper masses are close, closing and here the lower masses are opening again already and here the upper masses are 
opening a gap. So you can see there is a corresponding uh, the correspondence between the measurements and the simulations. Conclusions. The laryngoscope for deaf chemography. Uh, the design and development are ready now, and we did some successful tests with human subjects. The computer program seems to be capable of simulating the focal force dynamics in horizontal and vertical directions and with mass exchange between the two masses, solid and upper. And three, we have a direct comparison between the simulation and the measurements. More details in the program can be downloaded from this site. The publications again, this is the first publication with the outline of the technique and some measurements. Here is details of the technique with optics and so on. And here is the simulations and direct comparison with the 3D profile measurements. And this is the end of this presentation. Thank you very much.